This new model is like everything I think I've ever heard somebody ask for all wrapped up into one. Hello and welcome everybody, Josh the RV Nerd with Bish's RV down here with a brand new Cougar floor plan. I called it last year when they came out with the 23 MLE Cougar half ton fifth wheel. I said this is going to be their best selling fifth wheel. But a lot of people said I really like it, but I kind of wish it had things like a, a fireplace or a bed slide and washer dryer prep. Well guess what Carol Baskin? That's exactly what this one is right here. So the 23 MLE Cougar still exists. This is its big brother up in the full big cat Cougar line and basically what they've done here is they've kind of redesigned the entertainment bar station created like a little couple's dining desk situation that overlooks some campsite windows they've given it a couple chairs and it folds open and function as a desk it has ridiculous amounts of countertop and kitchen space and storage the tv cougar continues to listen way ahead of the curve the tv actually drops down so it's not this crazy high neck wrecker and up front they gave it the full big cat cougar upper deck with the larger bathroom the um uh you know full queen or king bed slide stackable washer dryer capable full front closet all the things that the 23 mle yeah you know me just couldn't do because of its size this one does by default now here for the new 24 season uh they have also done some things like they've actually improved their solar package uh everything went up by 10 percent, and the charge controller by default is double what it used to be so you now have 220 watts of standard solar but you can go 440 660 and there's some inverters that come along the way when you start going into those big packages and keystone kind of continues to lead the push and the charge in that area but this model uh it gives us no slides on the campsite of the rv like awesome uh, campsite function. When the slides are closed, you have amazing slide closed accessibility. This RV has very few Achilles heels, but it's not flawless necessarily. And I am going to try to show you where there might be a couple little hiccups along the way. So if you like seeing the good with the bad, even as I'm like excited, sorry, I, I, I like new things. Um, hit that subscribe button. Let's get started because this one's fun, son. And uh, I, I am obviously, as you can tell, very excited for this floor plan because have you ever noticed it seems like RVs kind of went from like one slide in the living room and nothing else up to uh, two slides in the living room and a bedroom slide. Like it went from like one to three slides in a flash. And those classic kind of two slide, uh, you know, bedroom slide, living room slide RVs, fifth wheels specifically, just sort of vanished. And this kind of brings that classic concept back together with some modern styling. And I, I think this is just an absolute stud of a floor plan. Now, it is weirdly cold this morning. And uh, as a result, the, um, the new linoleum they're using in their slide floor here hasn't quite warmed up and relaxed yet. So it is sort of uh, curling back a little bit on the corners. Once the RV warms up, that will relax and you won't have that bacon effect anymore. A lot of people look at that and go, there's a problem with the floor. Look at it. It's buckling. It's not the floor. It's just a flap of linoleum, you know. Uh, sometimes it, it may be a little more beneficial to maybe ask a question. Now, up here, we're moving up from what they call Cougar Half Ton, which I don't feel is typically Half Ton towable, up to what I call Big Cat Cougar. And this year... Um, where the floor plan allows, you're going to start seeing those residential fans up here, along with they're still maintaining that um, rain-sensing XL vent fan up top right there. So they are, uh, you know, where a lot of brands have kind of decontented and gone cheaper, Cougar has found a way to um, expand on their content, yet uh, they've been able to offset some of that cost in a couple different uh, kind of creative ways. So it's not like they've really gotten, you know, significantly more expensive. Now, with um, two-way refrigerators kind of um, uh, waning lately, not, not quite as popular and common as they used to be, uh, suppliers have become more limited and more costly. So Cougar has made the decision that uh, their 12-volt DC compressor fridge, period, that is it. But along the way, they also enhanced their Solar Flex package, where you have anywhere from 220, 440, and 660 watts of factory-supplied solar with zero 2,000 or 3,000 watt inverters included with those packages uh, respectfully, not to mention uh, a whole bunch of other things go along uh, with those packages. So my existing SolarFlex videos are not exactly spot on where they used to be, but by going more 12 volt stuff, they've also expanded their solar for boondock folks to be able to contend with that. And all of those packages, you can basically double 
So if you want to go, uh, you know, bump a 220 package up to a 440, you can do stuff like that, you know. Now, this model, look at all the kitchen countertop prep space that it has, that huge amount of solid surface prep space. And they drop in a couple pop-up power towers in some really key areas so that it doesn't mess with your big prep area, but it gives you room for appliances instead of shoving uh, power outlets under overhead cabinets where short appliance cords often struggle to reach them. They've uh, updated, upgraded the hardware on all their cabinets this year. Uh, you know, the, the, the handle poles, it's also magnet holdbacks now. And if we uh, take a seat over here at the theater seat, the TV by default is actually downward angled, which most manufacturers don't even do that. So at least that's something. Um, the windows all have shades. So obviously these big long windows along the countertop line have shades. The entry door isn't just shade prepped. It actually does have the, the bottom to top pull uh, blackout privacy shade included in it. And you don't see massive windows from the outside because they put some really good kitchen cabinet space in this. But when you're sitting down, the windows are right where you want them. So you still get a pretty decent look out of this. But like you saw in our little floor plan in a flash, I know I kind of already spoiled it for you a little bit. They were the first I have seen to actually do what people have been asking for for like two years now. Check this out. The TV's on a gas strut easy drop system. So the TV drops down so that it is no longer a neck wrecker entertainment. And for dining, the fireplace that the 23 MLE doesn't have, uh, above that is this like giant pull-out hardwood desk basically and the rv includes a pair of fold-away guest chairs that actually store just under or behind the desk and fireplace so you have uh this is an, a really truly a, a full-on fixed like couples camper although i do think you could put a hide bed in the slide instead of a theater seat there's definitely room for it but you've got you know the ability to have a desk you can do some work camping you could use the jumbotron smart tv as a, uh, a, t a monitor if you really wanted to. There's room on that table if you want to set up like dual monitors. There's so many things you could do with this floor plan. It is so much more than just a rear kitchen couples model. And as we're going to see when I close up the slides later in the video, this has what I'm going to call A plus travel access, brother. It has some of the best travel accessibility and function I think I've ever seen in uh in a fifth wheel this size it is one of the best traveling floor plans i've seen like i i think if what you're looking to be is like a full-time nomad or even a, a semi full-time nomad this rv probably fits that concept and lifestyle better than most anything i've seen because we've got the uh capability for not just a combo but washer and separate dryer prepped up in the bedroom You've got the uh, the good travel function. It's not so long that towing it is ridiculous. It has good cargo capacity. It has good suspension and tires. Um, you can option some TPMS onto this if you are so inclined. It's all prepped for that. There's so many things this one does well. It just checks major, major boxes. Like I said, this RV has very few flaws, I think, but we're going to still find a couple as we go, depending on how you feel about it. But this is a better angle to get to see. The TV is, at least by default, angled downward, um, and it, it kind of straps back flat for transit, so it doesn't jiggle bang around when you're, when you're rolling down the river. Now, all those previous cool Cougar features, like the dimmer switch lighting over in the slide, all of that stuff still persists. And I really like this expanded wider theater seat. I've never seen them use this before, but it's either cuddle compliant or you drop the armrest and it's population controlling, whatever you want. It's a wall hugger. It has multiple uh, like outlets and everything built into it. That thing is awesome. I, <laughs> I really like that. I like that theater seat a lot. Uh, up top here, you've got their Blade Pure Air System. This being a big cat cougar, I unless they've changed something, I don't have the, the update sheet in front of me. 15,000 BTU air standard here, and optional second centralized air available up in the bedroom, which is what you're going to see on this. I think I would probably put the second air on it pretty much all the time myself. But I know some boondocker folks sometimes don't care about that. Did you notice how the, the full face of the air conditioner looked a little bit differently? That's because it actually has a, uh, a residential air filter built into it, which is kind of cool. Now, you've got the, the little toe kick shoe garage under the fireplace, a little flip-flop slot there, but that's actually the air return for the furnace. So they have cleaned up. Um, the way that their steps look this year, and you've now got a flip-flop shop right over there uh, as well. And as we go through the RV, there's multiple outlets that have these yellow stickers on them. That's telling you that it is 
uh, prepped to be operated by an inverter off battery power. So that is something that is available on these, which I think is uh, very, very cool. They are still using their uh, in-command system up here that you see. And, uh, you know, nothing really, you know, new or earth shattering on that. I am going to turn off some lights to save a little juice here, though, as we work our way up into the bathroom where I'm going to try to cleverly reach around the corner while sweeping the camera a little bit to activate the lights here. That didn't work out as well as I'd hoped. That footage kind of sucked. Sorry. <laughs> Um, still a sliding door here for the bathroom privacy. Porcelain foot flush. The hip, shoulder, elbow room in this is just excellent. I know this, this bathroom design in Fifth Wheels feels like it's just absolutely done to death, but it's because it works really, really well. And I love the hanging towel bar instead of just a drunken octopus fight club on the wall. I prefer a hanging bar over the, uh, the, the hooks. I feel like it just gives the towel more area to stretch out and, and dry out better. You know, you don't end up with those damp spots in it. The upper deck headroom in these is pretty darn respectable, if I do say so myself. Not to mention that shower also has a uh, a seat in the uh, you know corner over there. All the things that you really want and needing. And then over here, they've kind of um, tweaked this around the last couple years. I think this is pretty much the same bathroom arrangement they had last year. But looking down here, you see where you have some great drawer space and a spot for a little wastebasket here in the bathroom. There's a little plumbing in the way, but. Overall, I think you can uh, kind of make that work. And it sort of looks like they just glued a mirror against the wall, but they didn't. There actually is a little bit of storage there. It's actually kind of recessed into the hollow pocket part of the wall where they weren't really doing anything with it before. And you might notice how P uh, Keystone as a whole, generally speaking, is very good about not using the, uh, I call them peekaboo, I smell you kind of uh, doors, the doors that, you know, you can sort of see up and around. Uh, again, optional second air, I think optional, if not standard. I, uh, I'll try to leave a note on screen when I get some clarity on that. Last I knew it was optional, but these are all 50 amp standard. Um, over here, look in the uh, the closet. Over in that corner, you see some household and USB outlets. So that's kind of going to be potentially like some um, standing fan or CPAP function or something like that. But it's easy to miss. Up above these uh, stands in here, there's also some power outlets that are inverter prepped on both sides of the bed. So you have four different inverter prepped outlets in just the bedroom uh, of this model right here, or basically any Cougar with a bed slide. So um, they've uh, kind of dressed and pressed some things up, changed up a few little wall boards. Again, I just want to show you where like all the different outlets are located. Um, you can see a couple right there, but again, there are another set of inverter prepped outlets up behind that little phone shelf. I'm not going to call that a CPAP shelf. I'm going to call that a little phone shelf. Oh, there's a couple lights there I forgot to turn on. Sorry about that. Let me get this uh, king bed up out the way real quick so you can see the storage down there. It is nice and easy lift. And then, um, you know, the, the other side of the bedroom, last year Cougar kind of redesigned this so that their bedrooms were not just combo washer dryer capable, but now stackable. And it is really crazy how much Big Cat Cougar that we're in here has stepped up compared to the last couple previous years. They are now, I used to say Montana doing Montana things, but you've now got the Big Cougars doing a lot of Montana things. And I think really blurring the lines for what might be the uh, an excellent ideal choice for you know a lot of full timers. Uh, especially if you're going to do some traveling and you're going to be mobile. This thing rocks. And I said this thing's great for ramble and gamble in road mode, but I've talked about it in a lot of my videos how it's not really okay sometimes, or at least it's not known or proven if you can use a bed slide when it's closed. I haven't heard Keystone say this specifically, so please take this with a grain of salt, but the fact that there's rollers right there means the end of that bed is supported. I... I'm not making you the promise. I'm saying that I don't personally see any reason why you wouldn't be able to use and occupy that bed um, in transit with the slide closed for a little bit of stealth mode camping. I'm not saying uh, it is necessarily rated for the aggressive folding of laundry while it's closed. Um, again, Keystone, it's weird. I've never heard a manufacturer actually put that uh, endorsement <laughs> onto their bed slides. But downstairs... When the slide is closed, you can easily walk through this thing. We can get to the refrigerator. We can get to all the counter space, um, tons of the storage. You can get to the sink. You could uh, actually, 
you know, like uh, post up shop, you could grab those little floating chairs and just use this for dining. This thing in my book gets flat out A plus travel rating. Uh, but what's your take here? And by the way, a little pro tip for you from your Uncle Josh. It's a little thing, but the little things add up long term over time if you use your RV a lot. When you're opening or closing your slide, crack a window or crack the door just a little bit. And uh, what you're doing is you're negating what's called the bellows effect of an RV, uh, or at least the stress that it puts on the RV. So if you think about it, the RV's got all these seals, and if the slide opens, the interior cubic foot of space inside this RV gets bigger. It has to get filled with air, and that is really hard for the RV to suck that air through the seals. But if you crack that a little bit, you'll take a little bit of stress off that motor. And same thing when you're, you're uh, closing the slide. It seems to be sound more impactful when you're opening than closing the slide. But you literally can hear the difference a little bit. Like if you start running the slide out, and then if you can reach the door and just pop the door a little bit, you'll actually hear the motor like go, like ease up just a little bit. And man, that adds up over time, the more you know. And if we talk towing, in terms of vehicles, uh, if, if you look at this, the empty dry weight is just a little bit below 10,000 pounds. The total GVW maximum weight after cargo is about 12,000. That means you've got, uh, what, north of 2,300 pounds of available cargo carry capacity on this thing. That is excellent on an RV this size. But if you look at the hitch weight, if you look at the total GVW, I think a three quarter ton HD, even a single rear wheel one ton would not necessarily be terrible options to uh, kind of plan on for towing one of these. Um, even though it is smaller than a lot of fifth wheels, it is still a full big feature Cougar with the big heavy bed slide all the way up front. And they wanted to make sure, you know, a lot of people do full-time RVing in Cougar RVs and they wanted to make sure that, yeah, the cargo capacity to do that. And that does kind of tend to bump the, uh, the vehicle requirement up a notch. So that is something to always sort of keep in mind. The front end of these hasn't changed too awful much, although they are no longer forcing lithium batteries uh, in their RVs this year. So lithiums were standard. Yes, lithiums were included before, but lithiums were never free. I don't know that like people, I mean, we, we know that old adage, nothing's free, right? You know, well, um, the, the lithium batteries were just part of the base price tag. You weren't paying extra for them, but they were part of the price tag. Well, there's a lot of people that park camp that don't need mega solar and need mega lithium that were paying for that. So they decided to peel that out. Lithiums are still an available option. And if we have one in stock that doesn't have lithiums on it, our stores can always get you some lithium batteries. I mean, that's not a big deal. The uh, awning on this with no campsite slides and the door in the middle of the awning, middle entry RVs are kind of becoming some of my favorite because the way the floor plans tend to work out. I really like what they're doing here. And uh, on a rainy day like this, you're not gonna have to like worry about getting spritzed in the face when you open that awning arm or the door because it's not right next to an awning arm. They've done a little bit of work just kind of cleaning things up down in here. And apologies for my camera getting a little bit foggy and misty out here on this uh, awful kind of dreary rainy day. This is one of those days where being able to be inside and away from the weather and enjoying that open living room and the better TV entertainment angle this is one of the models that you really learn to appreciate that on on a rainy day like this. Goodyear tires are still standard. You still have that Road Armor suspension package, which does a fantastic job of taking uh, a lot of that herky jerkiness out of the towing equation on these. And on the back, in that rear corner of the kitchen, where it's kind of an awkward spot on the inside where you can't really do much with it, they kind of shove a camp kitchen outside under it. So this is more at like chest level than, um, you know, you don't have to crawl on your hands and knees to try to, to reach it. You may notice how they do have a hot, cold uh, outside utility shower over here as well. And naturally just below this, there is going to be a gas grill cooker hooker to be able to run that uh, slide open um, griddle. But what's cool about this, if you're cooking on the griddle, it slides open far enough you could still reach behind it to be able to get in and out of the old beer fridge. You know, whether you're using that for bottled water or barley pop, whatever works for you, you can do it. And if you do get the 440 um, solar package that includes a 2000 watt inverter or the 660 that includes a 3000 watt inverter, or if you add an inverter to the standard 220 package, you can run this outside fridge um, you know, off battery power or in transit. Although again, with the interior refrigerator being very easily travel accessible, this thing having that A plus travel accessibility, uh, I, don't, I don't know that that's too much of a worry. Now it doesn't have a rear bumper, 
but in the back you do have a 300 pound uh, accessory hitch and then just in front of that hitch under the uh, the skirt line of this thing you do have one of those um, stinky slinky sewer tube kind of holder jobs so that you don't gotta get pink eye mixing your black tank stuff with your lawn chairs you know what I mean um, I did mention though the RV is not necessarily perfect one of the things that might be a little bit of a hiccup if you look down below the skirt line right now you can actually see them it's a two-headed sewer monster this does have dual sewer outlets and I know that some folks don't necessarily prefer that but uh, I, I know that Cougar does try to cross plumb everything together where possible and it evidently just wasn't really capable of happening on this floor plan, or I, I do think they would have done it. They've maintained that tankless on-demand water heater from last year as well over there on the right side of the screen, so you don't gotta worry about any chilly showers if you're going back to back. And I realized I never opened that up. I thought you'd like to take a look at your enclosed docking center. And since this baggage door goes right under a bed slide, they do throw it on some gas struts so you don't have to like try to juggle it open or do one of those extremely long kind of plastic holdbacks. They've also gotten rid of uh, basically all their Schwintech slides at this point. You see upstairs they're using a Norco cable exact slide system. This is where on the 220 solar package you'll find your uh, inverter prep if you want to activate those um, prepped outlets. You can wire an inverter in right there or ask us to do it, you know. Your auto leveling controls contained inside there. And one other thing I want to mention, Cougars have an excellent weather package. Um, I, I don't like this Four Seasons nomenclature and jargon in the industry. I think it sets false expectations. What I can tell you is that Cougars are rated, tested, proven from zero to 100 degrees. And I know multiple Michigan customers who have survived back-to-back -back polar vortex winters in these. Even though Cougar says, we can't promise you it's going to be able to do that, they've done it. In the summertime, they're 110 degree rated, which is 10% more than what most manufacturers test for. Uh, you know, the all-white AC shrouds, the white roof membrane, the bigger air conditioners really help compensate for that. But in the belly, yes, it's enclosed. It's forced air heated. They have standard holding tank heaters but they also have forced air heat ducting not just into the belly cavity, but a direct forced air heat dump onto each individual holding tank. So there's actually like four ducts pumping heat into the belly directly onto the tank, plus tank heaters, plus belly enclosure, plus radiant barrier, and a partridge in a pear tree. So let me know what you think of that. Now I'm getting some early footage on this. It is possible that these haven't started rolling out to our stores yet. So if you watch this video right when it comes out, uh, if you check those links for pricing and availability on our website we may not have anything listed there for you yet but that will resolve over time and you can always contact our local folks if you need some dollars and cents on things i don't know what they are standing here right now i don't have that information available to me apologies i do know that we don't do hidden dealer fees and we try to do everything else for you so when you're ready we're ready and let me know what you think about her and until next time take care stay safe have fun and happy camping everyone